We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well, Jared. How are you doing today, sir? Um, you know they they now ship Lee and Perrins in a clear glass bottle, and I'm upset yep. by this for reasons I, I I don't understand. But more importantly, it's a new tradition, but it's a good tradition. Ooh, I got. That, got that splashed was, on. Yeah, you, you got a little shower there. Yeah. Speaking I did. of shower, speaking of shower, we have just let's let's just let's just hit it right at the top of the show here, Jared, because it's fresh, fresh to us here as we're recording this. Um, a little bit earlier, just because of the holiday here, but we are we got, recording this on Saturday. The, Kyle, the way the the way the commits are coming in, we probably should point out that we're recording this on Saturday night instead of Sunday night because of Easter. Um. Yeah, we've had three commitments. We lose Boggs. Three. That sucked. But then we turned around and got three commitments. Who knows how many more will commit during the recording? I mean, <laughs> I hope it happens during the recording. If it happens on Sunday, I'm going to be pissed. I'm not. I'm going to be happy. I'm going to be happy for Ohio State that they got commitments. But the, but the podcaster in me will be slightly upset. Yeah. I'm committed so, to being a fan. Congrats. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, just boom 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 galore here. So, we're we're just going to start we're just going to start off with uh earlier when when was it? Recently, um Friday. It was Friday here. Uh London Merritt, the um uh one of the top defensive linemen in the country commits yep. to Ohio State on Friday. And then I, I, will, Saturday, I will point out that I had him in our mock last last Monday. We released a new mock. He was in it. Um, I, I, I will acknowledge I did not know it was that imminent. I, I, I did not have him as an imminent commitment. So, I, you know, I, I'm going to be honest about it. I'm going to be honest about it. And then, and then, secondly, here uh, we had moment pretty much back to back commitments on Saturday. First off is uh, Travis Alford, uh, one of the best linebackers in the country. I called uh, this one. out of out of Vero Beach. Yeah, I called this one. London Merritt sounds like a name for a luxury brand that you have to be in the know about. Yeah, it does. It absolutely Merit, does. Maybe. Maybe. And then the third one, Jared. Not, DZ not, Jones. I, 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 again, going back to last Monday's mock, total miss on my part. Uh, I had him in our extended right. list. I did not have him uh, in the class or even in the short list. I, listen, if, if, if someone from the short list ends up committing and is in the class, you know, I, I accept that as a partial win. When they aren't even in my short list, that that's a whiff on my part. That's that that's my bad. I will own that. If I'm going to yeah, accept the victory definitely. on the other two, I'm going to take my loss here. Yeah, definitely a little little out there. Um, currently, currently not very highly rated. I mean, it's still it's still a top. Um, well, I say Tokum is great. Yeah, yes, 225th in the um, nationally or. 367th in the composite, however you want to look at it. But yeah, there's definitely something that Brian Hartline liked out of him. So yeah. when, at when the Brian wide Hartline, receiver when position, Brian Hartline uh, taps your, your shoulder there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If they accepted the, a commit from a wide receiver, he's he's great. That's that's it. If this were the offensive line or a position in which Ohio State has struggled to uh, get commitments, then I might be a little bit more hesitant, but Heartline took him. So Heartline doesn't have to reach. So Heartline took him and he took him in March. He must be good. Yeah. Speaking of good. Oof. Speaking of good uh, wide receivers. <laughs> Pretty good wide receivers. Um, here we are. Spring camp. Where I know that we probably a week later here, but we wanted to get through some of our other topics before we dug deep into spring camp here and here we are jared spring camp is here uh we had a couple of scrimmages here actually uh, fresh off of one here as we're reading up a lot of things over at 
uh, the Buckeye huddle. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a lot, lot, lot of great, great things here. Probably a lot of people have seen highlights off of a, off of a certain wide receiver. Yeah, yeah. Hint, hint. Four big. <laughs> We're calling this episode the four big storylines. Four big storylines mm-hmm. after the Ohio State scrimmage, or something like that. I don't know. I haven't made it. I, I haven't made it punchy yet. But it's going to be something like that. Topic number one. Number one with a bullet. Jeremiah Smith, Kyle, the hype around Jeremiah Smith before he ever got to camp was huge. Then he gets to camp and you start hearing stuff and that hype, it gets turned up. So now the hype is, is huger than huge. It's ice cold. Like the, 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 and then we actually get some eyes on him, actually getting some eyes on him with this renewed hype. And it turns out that even the renewed hype, even the crazy hype wasn't crazy enough. Apparently it wasn't even crazy enough. Jeremiah Smith is already being anointed as next. And when you're, when you're next at wide receiver at Ohio state in the heartline era, that, that means something. When all of the reporters, when everyone is essentially saying, Ohio State's never seen a freshman wide receiver like this. Stop and think about the freshman wide receivers that Ohio State has had in recent yeah. years. Did he You're overtake kidding, Innes yeah. and Tate? Yes. He overtook Innes. He overtook Tate. You ever took Brayson Rogers? Uh, depending upon who you ask, he may have ever taken Emeka Abuka. The question is being asked: Is he the best wide receiver on the team right now? I, I'm not. I'm not putting him above Abuka yet. Not. Not in their. St- not where they stand right now. Now compare freshman to freshman. Yes. I'll ask Tim and Toby. Ask them. Actually, I tell you, why don't you ask Ryan Day? Uh, Ryan Day was asked about Jeremiah Smith. And his response was, quote, I'm going to be careful about, excuse me, I'm going to get this exact, I'm going to do this quote exact. Quote, I'm going to be careful what I say. But he's been a pleasure to watch. We're all very excited about his future. If you don't know how to, if you didn't, if you didn't hear him say it, if you didn't watch him say it, and you don't know how to read that. Ryan Day's just not trying to come out and say, holy shit. He's going to cost Ohio State a fortune and NIL. That's fine. Because Ryan Day basically had to stop himself from gushing about Jeremiah Smith. That's how good he is. So the follow-up question to that, obviously, during the press conference was, okay, but will he start? Like, is he good enough in this insane wide receiver room to actually start? Ryan Day responds, quote, if he continues on the path he's on, he's going to play a lot of football. Then he says, certainly would have a chance to start. So the question, Jared, here, Jeremiah Smith is the most hyped freshman since. Maurice Claret? I'd say more recent than that. No. I'd say more recent. Let's 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 jump back about 16 have to go, years from now. We have to go back to at least Maurice Claret to, to no, no, so, appreciate so this hype. That. No. Sooner I, than I, that. I, I, think, I think the most hyped since since JJ here has been Terrell Pryor. Think, Terrell think, Pryor. think about how, how how much hype came around Terrell Pryor when he announced that he's he's coming to Ohio State, ranked also ranked number one in the uh, recruiting class that year, coming from Pennsylvania. There, just all the hype and people thinking that 
he's going to start. He's going to start his freshman year. He's just that good. And it's just the build up, the build up of him coming onto campus here. Like it was, I, I, I think, I think the answer to that question, it was Terrell Pryor. I think he's more hyped than Terrell Pryor right now. Probably, probably. But your question he here more, is most he might hyped be more... freshman since Terrell Pryor. Is the yeah, answer. but I think he exceeds that hype. Which okay. is why I might go back to Maurice Claret. And quite frankly, he might even at this point. And like, there's fan hype, but then there's media hype. Fans will get excited about a lot of stuff. But like, when you see... Quinn Ewers was never going to play as a freshman, though. It was always like, ah, we'll see what Quinn Ewers can do. Right now, we have C.J. Stroud. I I don't feel like the hype was that crazy for for Quinn Ewers. I think there was hope. I think I think there was hope around Ewers, not hype around Ewers. Mm-hmm. I mean, he didn't even show. We did. He reclassified during fall camp. There wasn't time to hype him. There there was no opportunity to hype Quinn Ewers. I, people are dumb. I don't know what to tell you. Um, but yeah, the, the hype around him is insane. And like Kyle was talking about, there's all sorts of people, there's all sorts of videos and stuff out there. You can go watch a, uh, Buckeye huddle YouTube channel, put out a, yours was touted as generational. <laughs> Who isn't touted as gen- every year? There's a generational player. the The term generational has lost its luster. Um, lots of videos out there about, or you know, of of, of Jeremiah Smith, Kyle. He in a probably the most spread video. He beat. He beat both Burke and Downs. On a 50-yard play. He also completely... What's the, what's the saying, what's the saying, Jared? Iron sharpens iron. That's the phrase. We can talk about if that's accurate. Just from a metal standpoint, it's not. Um, but, Yeah. So is JJ the sharpening stone? Yeah, I think at this point he might be. Um, yeah, beat beat both Denzel Burke and Caleb Downs for a fifty yard pass, and that was after he beat Matthews on an eighty eight yard catch and run. How did that make them feel? Uh, Burke had actually I don't have it in the show notes. Uh, but Burke actually had a really funny tweet about it. Um, he's saying, as as Kyle said, saying iron sharpens iron, LOL, number four is for real. Or J is, JJ is real or something like that. Like, I, he's owning it. Yeah. He's like, Fair. the dude's real. Like, I don't, what do you want me to do? <laughs> yeah. Another, another wide The good news for Denzel that- Burke is, is that he doesn't ever have to, <laughs> cover J.J. Smith during a game. Yeah. Um, moving on to another wide receiver here. Uh, Bryson Rogers uh, getting a lot of praise from Ryan Day as well, saying he's an excellent route runner, uh, very quick in short areas, does a nice job in the slot, where he's a mismatch for a lot of guys because Beyond of that his job. quickness. Uh, challenge for him is to get stronger and to play on contact. He will definitely contribute if he can do that. Yeah, Bryson Rogers. I think because he entered the portal, but then came back. Uh, I think people might be uh, sleeping on him a tad. He had a absolutely fantastic uh, scrimmage on Saturday. Mm-hmm. Bryson Rogers could be working his way into the slot. Is you know, and and we'll talk about a little bit later about. Ryan Day hinting that we might see a deeper rotation this year, but we'll get on that later. So being number two in the slot may not have got you a ton of legit snaps in the past couple of years, but that might not be the case this year.
Okay, okay. I think I think that's it on Jeremiah Smith. We could send we could do the entire episode on him, but let's not. Let's uh let's spread some love around. Um Kyle, the quarterback battle is also raging. Yeah, this is this is probably one of the most uh seems like almost every year, um, whenever there's a new quarterback. Um most really focused uh, position here. Who's going to, who's going to be starting here? Is it going to be Howard? Is it going to be Brown? Sand? Uh, Kineholtz? Who, who's it going to be here? Uh, look, looks like that it's early on again, early on, on the, uh, on spring practice here, but it looks like Howard and Brown are taking the majority of the snaps there. Yeah. There's a ton of hype around saying right now. And for good reason. Yeah. There's there's a ton of praise surrounding Saiyan right now. And let me let me say this. The praise for Saiyan's huge. People are touting up his arm strength, his accuracy, a lot of huge praise for like his pocket awareness and and everything else. But all of that is like off the chart for his age. He's amazing. For his age. Saiyan, I, I I think, has a very bright future at Ohio State. But it's that. It's a future. It's not it's not a current. Mm-hmm. Um the starter will either be Howard or Brown. And if they plans on running his quarterbacks more this year, which seems might be the case, it might be Saiyan and Brown. Or excuse me, Howard and Brown. Um both of whom are mobile, both of whom do a good read option. So, you know, guys get banged up doing that. So you might see both Howard and Brown. Again, Day talks a lot about having a lot of guys ready. He wants to have a lot of guys ready this year. Day uh, talking about Will Howard. Um, Day praises his poise in the pocket. Uh, he says, quote, I think it's slowing down for him. Uh, different quote. Uh, he had some really great throws. He did miss some as well. Um, he says, as he learns his reads and quote, his eyes get right and his feet time up. Some of those uh, plays are uh, being made. Um, he says that Howard's only a few weeks in, but that he's seeing progress, uh, but then basically goes on to say that the next two weeks will be huge. The next two, hu- the, basically, you know, the next two weeks will be huge for for Will Howard. Mm-hmm. I'm, also, I'm also seeing phrases of like he's a he's a good, um, uh, like, oh, what was I, I wish I had the quote in front of me. Uh, able to control the game, like he has, a, he has a good game sense, manager. he has a good presence. Yep, a good game manager. Thank you. He's a good game manager. Uh, sees the field really well. Um, Makes um, makes the throws that he needs to. Um, yeah, I mean just that's has, just has a really good presence about himself when he's standing in the pocket. I, I think that's a lot of what I I think. After the scrimmage, you hear a lot of like, you know, we talk about Devin Brown. You know, I mean, no, I mean, excuse me, we were talking about JJ Smith and like some amazing catches he made. Well, guess who throw those through those amazing downfield passes? It was Devin Brown. It's not to say Howard didn't also have some good throws because he did. One, it, it seems if I'm trying to take the general consensus from from everyone who was there and was watching it and who was reporting, it seems to me that Devin Brown seems to be the better thrower of the football right now, which makes sense. He's been in the system the longest. Um, I don't think anyone questioned his his physicality. Um, he's he's inherent advantage of just knowing the offense, right? And and also getting to throw to JJ. Um, <laughs> there is that. But when people go to talk about Howard, it's almost like he's the better overall quarterback. Whereas Devin Brown might be the better thrower. So, you know, you sort of start talking about those intangibles, start talking about poise. You start talking about, 
just arm strength. Organization, it, communication, leadership, that kind of stuff. That all of that running the offense stuff, it seems like Howard might be in the lead there a bit. But the Devin Brown might just be a better thrower of the football. That's kind yeah, of the I, feel I, I'm getting. I've been, I've been seeing Brown as the as the better um, arm strength, able to get the ball yeah. down down the field quicker there. But like like you said, when you throwing it throwing it to uh, JJ or or to um, Ibuka there, it's 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 easy to <laughs> to feel comfortable throwing it up in the air when you got receivers like them uh, making plays down the field there. Uh, some other some other things real quick here, and we'll take a quick uh, ad break here. Uh, a lot of praise was saying, uh, saying he has really yeah. good arm strength, accuracy is there, pocket awareness. Uh, also seems to be off the chart for his age. So just as a true freshman, seems for to be his doing age. really well. For yeah. his age. Um, for his age, According yeah. to Tony and Tom and their uh, live broadcast after, uh, on YouTube after the after the scrimmage, they broke down the snap counts for the quarterbacks at Howard and Brown being roughly, these were estimates, being roughly even at about 30%, Keenholz at about 25%, and Sayin at about 15%. And this is strictly the 11 on 11 scrimmage. Um, there, there were also some seven on sevens and some individual drills, but talking strictly about the 11 on 11, the, the live scrimmage. Uh, it, it appeared to be like 30, 30, 25, 15 between those four. Um, Keenholz has taken a big step forward, according to most people. Um, Mark Givler specifically says uh, on the Buckeye huddle board, Keenholz made one of the better throws of the day uh, early in practice, threading one about 20 yards down the seam between three defenders to Julian Thurman who is another guy who has been getting a lot of praise. Um, there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of talented guys on this team, Kyle, a lot of talented guys on this team. It is a shame. Uh, you can only put 11 on the field <laughs> at a time. We'll at talk about time. player. We'll talk about player rotation, but yeah, storyline number two, no surprise quarterback battle. Uh, but uh, we need to take a quick ad break. Uh, so, with that ad break, I uh, want to let everyone know that you can avoid these ad breaks by going to patreon.thesloopcast.com where you get your very own podcast feed that doesn't have these annoying Spreaker ads in them. Uh, you can join our Patreon, our Patreon for as little as $3 a month or thirty two fifty. dollars I believe it's thirty two fifty dollars a year. Um, you can also give more, which we would appreciate. Uh, even if you don't plan on using that stuff, we'd still appreciate uh, some Patreon support that we put basically all of it right back into the podcast to improve the product. So um, if you want to help us out or if you want to avoid these stupid ads on Spreaker, then uh, please check out patreon.thesloopcast.com. Here are those ads now. All right, Kyle, the, the ads or the awkward silence where we put the ads are, are now over. Um, what is, what is storyline number three? What is storyline number three? Um, your favorite position, Jared, it's the slobs, uh, fighting, finding five, finding the five, the five slobs for the starting, for the starting, uh, offensive line here. So it seems, seems like Ryan Day's kind of just trying still trying to figure it out. He's, he's moving guys around, seeing who can play, you could play over at guard. You could play tackle, but I think we may have a good sense of who those five may be, though. I uh, I don't think so. Um, <laughs> you I don't think so. I don't. I don't. Um, so let, let's hear what Ryan Day has to say about it. Um, he says right now they're trying to find find out who their best five are. Um. They've been moving people around, especially on the right side. Uh, Fryer, Tegra, Montgomery have all been taking reps at both right guard and right tackle. Um, he praises both uh, Carson and Seth uh, for their uh, reps at center. Um, he, he specifically says Carson and Seth have both done a nice job. Good job, Carson and Seth. Um, uh, and to, 
and Tony Tony's saying that he's uh that Carson is going to start getting more snaps over at the guard. Yeah. Uh upcoming here. So Yeah, I wrote I, I wrote right here in the notes um that the right tackle position continues to be of deep concern for me. Yep. Um uh, but I'm also worried about the guard position. I'm also worried about right guard because I think the the idea was coming into camp that like you have Tegra, you have Fryer, and you have Montgomery. And of those three guys, of those three guys, we should be able to get a tackle and a guard on the right side. More I hear, more I watch, the more I listen. I don't know that Montgomery or Tegra would make good guards. I, I don't know that that conversion is a good conversion for them. I think those guys might be tackles. I think Fryer would make a good guard. I don't know if the guard experiment is yeah. working for Montgomery and Tegra, which going back to what Kyle said, well, that what Tony said that Kyle said, um, might thus might start seeing more uh hensman it sounds like but regardless the the person who doesn't win the center job might get bumped out the right guard instead which says to me if i'm be based off of what i said as far as if friars if friars the one that would make a good guard if Fryer is the one that would make a good guard and they're looking to bring someone else in at guard that says to me, Fryer is probably winning the right tackle job that, or they really want Montgomery to focus at tackle. Maybe they said, you know, maybe their thinking is no, we really need you to get reps at tackle and see if you can win the tackle job one way or the other. Uh, it's one of those two things. But it, it seems like they are. It seems like they're going to settle in with right guard being one of the centers. That that appears to be the direction that they are heading. Um. So if you if you were to pick right now, Jared, and feel free to you don't are comfortable answering right now, but. If you were to pick your starting five, who would they be? It's going to, I mean, we, we already know it's Simmons and Jackson on the left side. Um, it, it, it does seem like it's going to be uh, Seth McLaughlin at center. Probably now based off of what, you know, based off of Tony's reporting, uh, it, it does seem that it'll be Hinsman at right guard. And for right now, I'm I'm going to lean Fryer. Mm-hmm. I'm going to lean Fryer at right tackle. Um, I hope that Montgomery can surpass him. And if not, I hope that Ohio State finds an additional tackle in the portal. You can read, yep. you can read between those lines all you want. Um, Gangland says, "Would two veteran centers plus a veteran quarterback mean blitz ID and pass pro calls are near perfect?" It it helps. It helps a lot. I, I think part of the problem is those two, while those two guys are veteran, they've never in a game worked with each other and they're both completely new to the system that they are in. So there might be some growing pains at first, at first, um, once they settle in, it it, it should help a lot. Yes. Having, having that sort of experience at center and quarterback, Assuming that those two are the two that win the job, although Hinsman is also an experienced center, um, it would certainly help. Yes, it certainly mm-hmm. help with the with the line calls. Yeah. Um, All right. Ready for another, topic four here? 
Uh, well, one more note about the offensive line, and I don't think this Sorry. is a huge shock to anybody. Um, during the scrimmage, when it was one-on-ones, when it was the number one offensive line versus the number one defensive line, defensive line was getting the better of them, but it was a a good competition. It was a good fight. Um, of course, it's spring ball, so it's... It's your classic spring game thing of, well, if one unit looks good, that means the other unit looks bad. But it was a good fight. It was a good good competition. Um, The problem, and I don't think this is a a surprise to anybody, the problem is is when you got to the twos and to the threes, um, which is why I take a lot of the stuff when people start talking about this quarterback versus that quarterback or this running back versus that running back. It sounds like the offensive line, especially when the starting offensive line wasn't in, but even sometimes when the starting offensive line was in, but it sounds like the doesn't sound like it was much of a competition, especially when the depth players got in um, that the, the quarterbacks had guys in their face all day and they, they, the line battle up front was being dominated by the defense. Yeah. Which affects everything as we are all very well aware. Yep. All right. Let's move on to topic four real quick here. Player rotation, depth chart management here. This, I think this is the, this is one of the things that, I wasn't expecting to be like, I could have guessed the other three topics coming into this before the scrimmage. I, you know, finding the offensive line, of course, the quarterback battle, of course, JJ Smith, we were, you know, expecting slash, you know, the hype, the hype has been there. Now, the fact that he's exceeded that hype and that we got video of it is of course amazing. But this fourth, the fourth thing I I think is not something I was expecting to be talking about coming into today. Um, really liked, really, I spent a lot of time thinking about what Ryan Day said during his press conference. Um, storyline number four, player rotation and depth chart management day talking about a longer season with added playoff games. That's, that's the context in which day was talking quote. We're trying to build three deep at each position End quote new quote. Quote, we used to, uh, we used to say a pair and a spare end quote. Um, but now start quote, uh, we need to build depth at all positions. Um, he says that we are looking for quote, three guys at each position because all those guys are going to play. All those guys are going to play is what he said. Mm-hmm. He says, because we now, uh, we know it's going to be a long season. We are expecting, I guess. I'm not even on just a reflexive response. Well, we were just talking about the offensive line. I'm not, I don't know why I'm talking to you. You're not here. Hi, Esquire. When you listen to this later. Um, it's interesting. Because we have seen a lot of best 11. We haven't seen, since Brian Hartline took over the wide receivers, we haven't seen deep rotation from the wide receivers. We've gotten used to there being basically two running backs on the team. Mm -hmm. We have gotten used to like your best 11 on defense and maybe you get a little bit of rotation on defense, but like, you know, we didn't see JT or Sawyer leave the field a ton last year. Uh, we didn't see Steele or Eichenberg leave the field a ton last year. Burke basically never left the field. Starting safeties when they were healthy basically never left the field. Now Ryan Day's talking about a three-player deep rotation at all positions. And Based off of what I'm hearing, especially on the defensive side, especially on the defensive side, it sounds like that's a good thing. Like, it sounds like the defense is a starting lineup at least too deep. 
which you're not that, surprised that just, by. Yeah, that just that just tells me that you can you can get your player, you can get all your players to go as Urban Meyer said, go from point A to point B as fast as you can for four seconds. You get those yeah. players doing that and get some fresh legs in there so that they can go as fast as they can every four seconds then just to wear out the offensive line, offensive, everybody on the offensive side. It's a good thing. Yeah. So like reading between the lines, I mean, Day is either saying or at the very least insinuating that we're going to see a lot more rotation this year. The question I ask myself being, you know, rule one, the doctor lies, right? Rule one, the doctor lies. Is this a sincere approach? Are we going to see a lot more rotation for Ohio State this year? They have the depth this year to do it. I mean, they were not anticipating getting th- this many of their 2021 class back. Like, they have the players at basically every position except the offensive line, if we're being real. Mm-hmm. But they have players at basically every other position group to go at least too deep. They have the guys to do it. Um, so I think it'll be interesting to see how much of that is real. How much of that is them very deliberately saying is him very deliberately saying, yeah, we're going to go two, maybe three deep in rotation. And how much of that is him trying to uh, keep kids out of the portal? Because that's, that's what my cynical side says. Like, mm-hmm. is he putting this out there during the press conference? Cause it, he went out of his way to talk about this. Like, this was something he went into the press. No one was asking about this. He went out of his way in the press conference to talk about this. Is he is he subtweeting to the players who aren't starters saying, hey, guys, don't leave? I know you might not be starting. By kids, do you mean Dallin Hayden? I think he specifically, when talking about the running backs, uh, let's see, I have some notes from his press conference here. Um. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't have a direct quote directly, but yeah, he specifically, you know, he praises, he made sure to praise uh, Henderson and Judkins and Hayden, and then went on to praise both of the freshmen who were, quote, picking things up quickly. And then he even, again, goes out of his way to talk about walk on TC Caffey. Like, and he says about Caffey, quote, he's going to play for us. He's going to get carries for us. And again, like, it sounds nice. Get to walk on some carries. He's great, and he works really hard, and he's going to get some carries for us. All that sounds great, except... And Ryan Day has also talked in recent press conferences about how they expect to have less snaps because of clock changes. So if there's less snaps, that's less... That's less balls to go around. He's going to get some carries to me translates that we're going to blow people out. And we are. This, this team is going to, is going to bulldoze lesser competition. But it all, it all starts with the offensive line though. You can get the offensive line all figure it out. Yes. The offensive line is good enough given all of the talent and given the, how good the defense is going to be this year. The offensive line is good enough to wipe the non-conference schedule and the lower level big teams off the face of the earth. The offensive line's good enough for that. Cuz even if the offense isn't hyper efficient, they're going to get a, they're going to get chances because the defense is going to get them ball back quickly, the score is going to be low. So even if the offensive line isn't running at like peak like absolute peak efficiency, we're still going to blow teams out. Mm-hmm. Now, when you have to go and play Oregon, you have to go and play, you know, Penn State. Those are going to be tougher games. You, you, you know, the offensive, those are the games when we get to the playoffs. Those are the games that the offensive line needs to like really figure their shit out for. The offensive line is good enough to beat. And I mean, I don't mean defeat. I mean, beat lower level Big Ten teams. 
the, the problem will be what happens when you play the top tier Big Ten teams. What happens when you get into the playoffs? That That's when we have to be afraid of the offensive line. But when we're playing Akron, when we're playing whoever, like, offensive line's plenty good to just humiliate those teams. Yeah, I mean, but, I mean, you look, <laughs> yeah, you, you look at their, their start of the schedule, yeah, it's, you, you, you hope that Ohio State should be able to to completely wipe wipe the competition going going into the, October. Yeah, I mean the the first big the first big hurdle is Oregon. And you have to go to Eugene. That's going to be a tough game. Ohio State could lose that game. It is. Yeah. Ohio State could yeah. lose that game. Going out to Eugene for the first time ever. Have we ever played in Eugene before? Um I don't know. If we have, it's been a very long time. Um It's it's that's gonna that's gonna be a very very tough football game, and all, that game will be highly dependent upon what the offensive line can do. But all the other, you know, most of the other games, the offensive line's good enough. When when we worry about the right tackle, when we worry about the right guard, we're talking about against Oregon. We're talking yeah. about in the playoffs. We're not talking about against even Minnesota. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um. We're not talking about those games. We're talking about winning yep. a national title. Yep. Because the defense is absolutely good enough. And the offensive line, even, is absolutely good enough to win all of those games relatively easy. Mm-hmm. All right. We're, we're going to go ahead and get into the uh, the last topic here. Um, but we're going to take a quick well, the, ad break. Those are the four big topics. But don't worry. Yep. We still got plenty to talk about. We got we got we got an everything else topic. Yep. Those are the four big topics. We're gonna take a quick ad break here. Um I won't repeat what Jared said before, but we're go we'll go ahead and take an ad break right here and be right back. And we're back. That's very uh, everything else. That's very awkward for the people who don't get commercials. It must be. Yeah. Everything else here, Jared. Um let's see. Start off here with uh, Ransom's recovery. Uh, it says here uh, he's doing individual trainings and being uh, and is being mixed into seven on sevens. Uh, he's e- being eased back in, and they're trying to be smart with him. Yeah, uh, you know it was a, it was an injury coming into the camp. It's not anything that we're surprised by. He's a very experienced guy. There's no reason to rush him back into things. I think this is another reason if we talk about the rotation that we did, we're talking about before the ad break. One of the reasons why you can get away with a lot of that rotation is because you have so many senior guys on the team who don't necessarily need a ton of reps. Um, yep. So, yeah, bring back Ransom slowly. Hell, just, just he, doesn't need, he doesn't need to be taking any hits during spring. It's fine. He knows what he's doing. He's a big boy. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Brandon Ennis is still dealing with injuries, but to say that he'll be fine going into fall, so we're not we're not going to see we're not going to see much uh, of him either. Yeah, the day the the exact phrase day used there was it's a quote temporary injury. Yeah. Uh, on the defensive line here, you can you can see quickness in some of those interior guys. Um, he name checks at Caden McDonald and Jason Moore. Jason Moore has flashed and shown he can do it. Been a lot of a lot of Jason Moore hype. A lot of Jason Moore yeah. hype during camp. Keep an eye on Jason a lot Moore. Of, a lot of Mitchell Milton hype too. Uh so that he got a couple of sacks today as well. Yeah. Uh Mitchell Melton. I I he's he's gonna be our block out, right? Oh. Possibly, possibly. Okay. I, I think that I think there's a number of guys that could be. I think Melton's on that list there. Linebackers, man, like when is this the year, Jared? Is this finally the year that we actually can say that we actually have a very, very good linebacking crew? I, what do you mean? I, we could have said that last year. What are you talking about? Eichenberg's great. Steele is great. Simon was rotating in. Now, if we want to talk about like elite status, let's 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 do elite. 
uh, I don't ha- I don't think I have this quote in the in the notes, but I, I think they they did talk a lot about their athleticism. Um, yeah, I think I do have that part in there where he says, uh, Day is seeing the uh, speed, length, and athleticism from Cody Simon, Avril Reese, Sonny Styles, CJ Hicks, and Gabe Powers. Um, talking about CJ, he says he, quote, plays fast and, quote, really likes blitzing. Apparently, he had a couple sacks during the, uh, dur- during the scrimmage. Um, he wa- uh, Day said... He watched Steele and Ike do it and quote, now he's, or yeah, now he's doing it um, or how he's doing it in the notes, but I'm sure I meant to say now. Um, we're talking about the three and the three at this point appear to be Hicks and, uh, and then um, obviously Cody Simon with you know your veteran status and then Sonny Styles bumping down from safety and I you know we talk about odd fronts We're talking a lot about odd fronts um mm-hmm. you could see Hicks or I think Hicks or Styles sort of bump down and be that fifth guy on the offensive line or excuse me on the defensive line um bump down and be a, an additional edge rusher, I think is something you could absolutely see, or maybe not even an edge rusher, just a sort of the classic sort of three, four, you know, three blitzers plus one, but you don't know who the plus one is. And I think a lot of that time, that plus one is probably going to be uh, either, either Hicks or Sonny Styles. Yeah. Um, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, Ohio State has in recent years, uh, un- under Knowles, I don't know why I say under Knowles has has played two linebackers, but all of the talk right now is about three linebacker, three linebacker, three linebacker, three linebacker, and we know they're not gonna take a defensive back off the field. Nope. We're we're I think we're running nickel all basically all year except for you know specific situations. But, but you're looking at that in the middle of the line. field. It- you're looking at that defensive line and like, do you feel comfortable of taking that some of those talented guys off of, off of the field too? To me. Ends and, and, uh, and the DTs too. To me, what I think, I think, I think you have a, a solid, and again, they're talking about a lot of rotation, but to me, the starting unit is 10 guys. And then like, you bring in the 11th guy situationally, right? You have three safeties or you know, let's say two safeties because that, that Hancock is like the third safety, but he's a corner. I don't know why we play this game. He's a corner. He's a cover guy, whatever. He's the nickelback. Just call him the nickelback. You have Hancock at the nickelback. You'll have downs. And then of course, once he's healthy, ransom, um <laughs> uh who who is Justin Fry? Who who is that that said that? We we have maybe some breaking not news, but who 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 is that? I don't recognize the handle. Someone's very excited about Justin Fry. Maybe maybe we're getting an, an offensive line commit here soon. Um but again, defense. To me, you have, uh, he's been ahead on commitments for a while now. Um, he's the guy who posts the cup of coffee. Seems like there's an offensive line commit coming. I'm not going to speculate about it because by the time most people hear this, he probably is already committed. So we're excited. I'm sure people listening to this later on probably already know who it already knows who it is. So I'm not going to speculate. Uh, but again, defense, defense, defense. 10 core players. You have five defensive backs. You have Iggy, you have Burke, you have Downs, you got Ransom, you got Hancock. That's five. The other five, in my opinion, are three defensive linemen who are JT, Sawyer, and Tyleek, and then two linebackers. 
which I believe are probably Simon and Styles. Now, depending upon what you're looking at, who is the 11th guy who comes in? Probably either a defensive tackle or CJ Hicks. That's, I think, largely what we're looking at, right? And it's just, it's situational. Do you bring in the second defensive tackle or do you bring in the third linebacker? And like I said, I think that's probably very situational. Um, Gangland says, I just thought of this, but can we get a Jared Pack watch emote <laughs> for for gifts for booms? Maybe. Back up. Um, the, uh, yeah, but th- so to me, that's, that's how I see the defense. I see it as 10 plus one. Yes, exactly. I see it as 10 plus one. All right, Kyle, where else? Um, talk to linebackers. We talked about Mitchell Melton. We talked about injury recovery. Uh, I already talked about these running backs, so I think, I think we're good. Um, Jaden Bonzu has been getting a lot of reps of largely again, because ransom's out, but Bonsu in getting a lot of reps with the ones. I think that's very noteworthy. Yeah, no, that definitely is. Definitely is here. Cause I, cause I, cause I love Tony. I, I just want to, I want to, I want to give um we all love Tony. his, Yes, I want to give everybody his his thoughts on what his t- his standouts were from what he observed. Absolutely, we all love Tony Gerdeman here. Yeah, obviously JJ. <laughs> you could have skipped uh, that. He one, also Kyle. he also says uh, Lorenzo Styles was a standout. James yeah. Peoples, he he, me- he mentioned James Peoples. He goes, he goes, holy crap, he is quick. Yeah. Uh, Emeka Hicks. Devin Brown and Bryson Rogers were his were his standouts. I think it's incredibly noteworthy and maybe even I, I would almost say surprising. Like, again, this is one practice. I think that's a thing that we need to put a blanket statement on. We're talking about we're overreacting to this in the same way we were overreact to the spring game. It's the one practice that we have reporting on, so we're gonna overreact to it, right? And that's what we're doing here today. As is tradition. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> but I would say the name that has popped up and has popped up consistently about this scrimmage that I would I would say was most surprising for me is probably Bryson Rogers. Uh, I think this is a yeah. guy who a lot of people were maybe overlooking because he Tran- you know, he didn't transfer, but he put himself in the portal. He he made himself available to transfer. He ends up coming back. And I think a lot of people in many ways maybe mentally moved on. And don't. Don't. Uh, I, I think, you know, and Brandon Ennis, of course, um, injured, not participating in this, in this scrimmage. Um, and Ennis is probably going to be in the slot is my assumption. We're going to see Ennis in the slot. Um, and Bryson Rogers uh, day specifically said is probably going to play in the slot this year. So here's another guy like Jaden Bonzu who are, you know, taking advantage of some added field time because of injuries in front of him. But the important part is, is that, he is taking advantage of it is that he is taking advantage of it and you know stop sleeping on Bryson Rogers I think is my my recommendation Kyle I I have officially and we aren't doing depth chart yet well we're going we did it we did a best guess the depth chart back in January I think it was it's like a ridiculous exercise of trying to guess the depth chart 
right right at the end of the the previous season, right? Ridiculous exercise, mm-hmm. but it's fun. And somewhere on our schedule, I believe it's the second to last Monday of of April after the spring game, we're going to reshuffle that depth chart. We're going to do another depth chart projection. I'm yep. telling you right now, I'm telling you right now, JJ's going to start. I don't know what position I'm starting him at. And maybe it doesn't happen the first week of the season. But if we were reshuffling the depth chart right now, I'd have I'd have Jeremiah Smith starting. Gang Lance says I think he starting. starts week one. He, I, I I he might. Not, he, I think he might. He's not gonna be in the um wide receiver X, wide receiver Y, or Z. He's just gonna be wide receiver J. J. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wide receiver J. I I mean I, again, we can we can do X and Ys and da 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 da. But like, it's J. I think the three. I think the three. If I were to guess the starting three wide receivers right now, it's Emeka, it's JJ, and it's probably Ennis. I'll say Ennis is in the slot. JJ and Emeka are on the outside. Uh, I, I don't. I'm not going to try and differentiate which one of them is which at this time, but. Um, I'll say the two outside receivers are, are going to be a Mecca and JJ and that the slot receiver is going to be Ennis. Mm-hmm. So we're not doing a full depth chart reshuffle yet, but you did. I did give you a starting five guess on the offensive line. And now I'm giving you a starting five guess, or excuse me, a starting three guess for the wide receivers. And I also gave you who I think the core 10 players are in the defense, but that that's not, that's not, that's just fact. That's not even a projection. That's just, we know that that's a known. We, we know who those players are, right? Um, yeah, I don't know, Kyle, how, how are you feeling right now about the team? I feel like it's deja vu from last year. A lot, a lot of talent. I don't agree. Bo- well, a lot of talent on both sides. Defense, one of the the top defenses in the country, like like they were last year. Anticipate them to be even better than last they're take, year. They are taking such. I think they're and, taking insane but, step forward from last year. But it's going to come down to the offensive line and the quarterback play. Not now. Now maybe maybe this year you can maybe throw in there about. Maybe the tight end position because the tight end is still kind He'll of a question mark still, but it's it's the offensive line, it's the quarter, it's the quarterback play. It's but when I say deja vu, it's it's those two positions again. Here they, is what's going to make or break this season. They don't have again. Cade Stover on this team. <laughs> Shot, uh, breaking news: Cade Stover no longer on the team. Um, they don't have Cade Stover on this team, and I don't just mean they don't have Cade Stover on this team. I mean they don't have the tight end on this team. And quite frankly, I think that's fine. You might not have the one guy, but I think you have a tight end by committee. And that's fine. I think in Thurman, you have a pure pass catching wide receiver in Kitzmerick. You have a pure blocking tight end. I said receiver for Thurman. I meant tight end. And then, I, then I think beyond that, with um, help me, I'm blanking on his name. The third tight end, someone help me. Converted uh, uh, wide um, receiver. I'm uh, I, I, uh, I'm having uh, a name blank. Wow. Junior. Uh, what the hell is wrong with my brain? Ballard. No. <laughs> Kyle, I'm hold on, <laughs> hold on. Let me pull up the roster. I'm why, why did we I'm, do this at the same G Scott? Thank you. We have G Scott here, here, everyone can see it on the discord. Here's, here's, by the way, we have the full roster listed out with eligibility in the discord server, discord.thesleepcast.com. You can see all of these players listed out with their eligibility. Um, 
this and so much more cool little information graphics available at uh, discord.thesleepcast.com. See, I turned it into an opportunity. I think G. Scott's probably your versatile tight end. He can block, he can catch. You got Thurman, who's, you know, very pass catch oriented. And you have Katzmerich, who is a, who is a blocker. And I think that's fine. I don't know if you... This, this team's so fucking loaded, quite frankly, that like, oh, our tight end is by committee because we don't have a stud there right now. That's fine. Like, it, it's not... Doesn't bother me. We have so many athletes on offense that like, I kind of think that Ketzmerich's going to be the guy. Mm-hmm. Because like, do we really need another pass catcher on the field? Because yeah. Henderson has proven himself a good pass catcher. Judkins has proven himself a good pass catcher. Like, if you have three wide receivers and a good pass catching running back on the field, I, 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 you know, just put the blocking tight end out there. It's fine. It's fine. Just put the blocking tight end out there. Yep, yep. All right, Kyle. Think- um, anything else? No, I think I think that's it. I think I think we'll go ahead and uh wrap the show up here. Yeah. Um I'm really curious who that offensive lineman is. I'm not gonna lie. Well, join the Discord and we'll we'll, we'll talk more about <laughs> we'll, it. I mean, again, by the time this episode actually comes out, I'm I'm sure it will have been announced. Um but until then, uh it's still in our future. Uh it's probably in everyone else's past, but it's still in our future. But uh, Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner that you would like to uh, discuss or add on to the topic? Um, we've had quite a few uh, black stripes since last we talked here. So JJ and um, freshman uh, retro freshman walk on um, Shram were had their first black stripes removed, and then this week we had uh, Caleb Downs, Judkins, and then. Today, Saturday, uh, Will Howard and Seth McLaughlin are the last of the Black Stripes so far. Yeah. Um, yeah, Black Stripes a huge deal. I don't. I don't know. The fact that JJ Smith lost his Black Stripe before any of the transfers is <laughs> crazy. Something else to add to the list, quite frankly. Um, the, the hype is insane around him right now. Um, and like, I, we're even getting it from the beat reporters who are like, Kyle, we always used to joke about shiny freshman, this shiny freshman that, you know, beware talking about the shiny freshman in, in the spring and in the summer camps, because we just like to talk about them because they're new. We know we've already talked about the other guys, shiny freshman, shiny freshman, but I'm just, we, we can officially take the shiny freshman rule and, and just in, in regards to, 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 to JJ, just toss that out. The hype is very real. I, again, expect him to start at this point when a true freshman halfway through spring camp, we are halfway through spring camp, Kyle. Ryan day was asked if would a freshman start, and he, I, in my opinion, had to stop himself from saying yes. In my opinion, if you watch that press conference, he is he just actively is trying to stop himself from saying yes. And that's insane. Yeah. Is that it for Kyle Scorner? Right. That's it. That's all I got. Tonight's ending music brought to you by Defiance Ohio. They are a uh, a classic Ohio band. Uh, they're like a folk punk group from the 90s. One of my favorite bands to ever come out of the state of Ohio. So we'll be playing one of their songs. So uh, with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support local podcasters. Once again, this is Defiance Ohio. <laughs>